February, we met Ryan Gallick, a former firefighter and paramedic with St. Cloud Fire Rescue, to talk about Silent May Day, a book highlighting the challenges first responders face. And Ryan's ha Ryan has made it a mission to get results for first responders by raising awareness about post-traumatic stress disorder. And now he and a co-founder have a new project. They're here to tell us about it. They want to make sure workplaces create a positive workplace for mental health. Joining us now to talk about the Mental Hygiene Project, Ryan Gallick and Michael Stahl. And thank you for being with us again, Ryan. And congratulations on your retirement. Thank you so much. Now. Greatly appreciate <laughs> yes. that. Thanks for having us. And we're excited to hear about the Mental Health Hygiene Project because anytime we can get the conversation going about mental health, I think that helps people. Absolutely. Well, you know, the Mental Hygiene Project is a partnership between Ryan and I that offers mental health and wellness programs that specifically create focused, effective employees, strong mental health in the workplace and lower on-the-job risk, and also effective, inspired leaders. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're hearing now that workplace burnout is now an official diagnosis. I mean, how do people know if they're experiencing some of this and what can we do, especially if you work in a place maybe that's, you know, we've all worked at those places that kind High of stress. Yeah, suck the life out of you. Mm -hmm. How can you deal with that? Yeah, I think it, today, you know, all organizations and employees are experiencing trauma or they're experiencing burnout and the stressors of the job. And I think it's really important for the employers to provide educational programs to help with resiliency and, and teaching the individual about resiliency, but also creating programs that build organizational resiliency. It's a system, it's a process that takes time, and it's a collaborative effort to create mutual benefit for the employee and the employer. And you as a first responder, you're not just talking about the high stress as first responders, people in the medical pool, medical emergency uh, professions, but you're also talking about people who work day in, day out. It could be as in a cubicle or out on the job, but you're also talking about breaking the stigma. You want to change that PTSD to PTSI. So what's that about too? Yeah, so you know, I think we, we all have skin in the game when we talk about mental health. At one time or another, we have all experienced a temporary challenge of life. And I think that, that there's a stigma, or I know that there's a stigma, associated with mental health. And part of that change is where we can create the conversation and normalize the conversation of mental hygiene or mental health. And it's really being careful with the words that we use. You know, when I was back on in February, I had talked about the fact of saying died by suicide rather than commit suicide or complete suicide because that term complete makes it sound successful right. that they actually did it. So died by suicide or let's change that PTSD to PTSI, post-traumatic stress injury, and show that it is actually an injury and you can have post-traumatic growth after post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And post-traumatic healing. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're seeing it in a variety of workplaces. It's not, it's not just you know, people seeing like tragic things on a daily basis, but in stressful situations in different offices. And Very much so. From a corporate perspective, a mental health is really no longer in the shadows. The American Psychiatric Association says that one in five Americans will experience some kind of a mental health issue uh, and that is more in their lifetime, and that's more than cancer, heart disease, and diabetes combined. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you uh, look at the workplace issues. Statistics tell us that up to 80% of people have dealt with a kind of workplace stress that creates decreased productivity and interferes with their uh, personal relationships in a negative way. So what we're doing is we don't want to uh, just create awareness of mental health injuries in the workplace, both in public and private institutions. We really want to uh, create and we're offering programs that uh, mitigate and help to avoid these kinds of injuries. And in addition to that, create a healthier workplace that's more productive. So for somebody sitting at home who's thinking, oh my goodness, I need this, how can they reach out? How can they get some help with this? Yeah, so we have a Facebook page, The Mental Hygiene Project. We also have it on LinkedIn, and we have a website, www.mentalhygieneproject.com.
And of course, you'd probably like to hear from employees and employers because like you were saying, it's a hand in hand. It, it works as a team when it comes to mental health. Absolutely. And, you know, one other statistic that is remarkable uh, from the American Psychiatric Association, they say that there is more than $44 billion of lost productivity specifically due to depression alone. And that doesn't even include wow. all of the other mental health injuries. Mm. Fascinating discussion. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And uh, we'll keep Thank in you. touch.